Sometime around 2012, small invaders from Southeast Asia slipped into southeastern Pennsylvania. For the next two years, they stayed under the radar as they quietly went about their business, eating, mating, and multiplying, until they were discovered and reported by a Pennsylvania Game Commission employee. On September 22nd in 2014, the Pennsylvania and United States Departments of Agriculture confirmed the presence of the spotted lanternfly in Berks County, Pennsylvania. This was the first detection of this non-native species in the United States. Once you have seen a spotted lanternfly, it is hard to miss them. They are rather large and distinctive looking. The spotted lanternfly adult is approximately one inch long and a half an inch wide when it is at rest. They have red hind wings, which they show when they are startled or when they fly. But most of the time, the adults rest with their four wings folded over their backs. These four wings are gray mauve with black spots. Spotted lanternflies do not directly harm humans or animals through biting or stinging. They do not feed on dead wood such as house frames. Instead, they have a long, thin, piercing mouth part called a proboscis that they insert into the trunk, stems, or leaves of host plants and feed on the sap. A single spotted lanternfly doesn't do much damage, but lanternflies tend to feed in groups which can weaken plants, diminishing crop yields, and making plants susceptible to disease. However, these aren't the only problems caused by spotted lanternfly. As they feed, spotted lanternflies excrete copious amounts of partially digested sap called honeydew, which is high in sugar content. Honeydew sounds rather pleasant, but it is far from that. This sugary substance quickly accumulates under where the insects feed, and a black sooty mold grows on it. The foliage in this picture is not wet with water. These plants are covered in sticky honeydew and are developing sooty mold. The honeydew and sooty mold harm vegetation and make fruit inedible and unmarketable. Living in an area infested with spotted lanternfly can be a nightmare. Swarms of insects cover trees. Honeydew and sooty mold contaminate anything that is under the infested trees, including houses, outdoor furniture, play equipment, and ornamental plants. The mold can have an unpleasant odor and the honeydew can attract stinging insects. The honeydew and sooty mold are difficult to clean and make outdoor living unpleasant. This photo shows outdoor steps that were under an infested tree. Sooty mold covers the top two steps. The bottom step and rail were power washed, but did not come completely clean. Residents say walking in a spotted lanternfly infested area is like walking through sticky rain. You can actually see the swarms of spotted lanternflies and the honeydew raining down in this video. Many people choose to stay inside when spotted lanternflies are active rather than deal with this unpleasantness. The spotted lanternfly is also a huge threat to agriculture and natural resources. While one of its preferred hosts is another invasive species, Alanthus altissima, also known as tree of heaven, the spotted lanternfly feeds on many local crops and native plants. It has been seen feeding on more than 70 species of plants. Spotted lanternfly is especially problematic for grapevines, apple trees, and peach trees, as well as a number of hardwoods, including black walnut and maples. It has been seen feeding on hops and a variety of vegetables. Experts think that it could become a serious pest of ornamental trees and tree fruit. As the spotted lanternfly adjusts to its new home, we must be prepared to control the potential damage from it. These unwanted insects invaded South Korea in the 2000s. Within three years and with three separate introductions, spotted lanternfly infiltrated the whole country, wreaking havoc as it went, and seriously impacting grape and peach crops. If this happens here, the economic impact could be staggering. 
What is at risk from spotted lanternfly? Many valuable agricultural commodities. States where spotted lanternflies have been detected produce $802 million in tree fruit, $113 million in grapes, $110 million in small fruit, and $2.6 billion in ornamentals. Nationwide, these numbers grow to over $18 billion. Our abundant hardwood forests may also be at risk. Did you know that the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast hardwood industry is worth tens of billions of dollars annually? Our forested state and national park lands in these states draw millions of outdoor enthusiasts. They could also draw billions of spotted lanternflies. Many industries that depend on agriculture, such as shipping, processing, packaging, and other related services are also at risk. And this is just in the Mid-Atlantic region. Neighboring states and eventually the entire country are also threatened. For this reason, other states and countries could impose trade restrictions upon goods from areas where spotted lanternflies are found unless we work to control it. This is why, as soon as the presence of spotted lanternfly was confirmed in Berks County in 2014, the Pennsylvania Department of Agriculture started a monitoring program and set up a quarantine area. As these insects spread, the quarantine area correspondingly grew and other states added their own quarantine areas. The quarantine areas now encompass most of southeastern Pennsylvania, as well as parts of surrounding states, including New Jersey, Delaware, and Virginia. Chances are the quarantine areas will expand again. We have a lot at stake in the battle against this invasive pest. Therefore, it is crucial that the people who live and work in the quarantine areas comply with quarantine regulations. Please do your part to stop the spread of the spotted lanternfly and save the livelihood and quality of life for you and your neighbors in the Mid-Atlantic and Northeast regions and beyond. Spotted lanternfly is threatening our forests, crops, and landscaping in the northeastern United States and beyond. How can we stop it? Let's first take a look at what we know about its life, likes, and dislikes. Let's get to know the enemy. Spotted lanternfly is a native of Asia and can be found in China, Bangladesh, and Vietnam. It is an invasive species in Japan and Korea. Most of North America and all of Central America fall within the climate zones, which will allow this invasive pest to move and establish populations. Spotted lanternflies strongly prefer to feed on the Tree of Heaven or Alanthus altissima. Tree of Heaven itself is an invasive tree from Asia that has spread to most of the United States. However, as the population of spotted lanternfly grows, the insect is feeding on new food sources. It seems to favor black walnut, maple, grapes, and apples, among others. In fact, it has been observed feeding on more than 70 different plant species. To understand the spotted lanternfly better, let's look at its life cycle. Spotted lanternfly produces one generation per year in the Northeast. Starting in late April to June, eggs hatch into flightless nymphs. The nymphal stages are called instars. Every time a nymph sheds its skin, it becomes the next instar. First instar nymphs are tiny. They are the size of a tick, but move much more quickly and have a different shape. They are black with white spots. All nymphs are strong jumpers and they will often hop away from you as you approach. The second and third instar nymphs emerge through early summer. Each instar is bigger than the last. 
The spotted lanternfly goes through four instar stages before maturing to adulthood. Nymphs feed ravenously on sap from the stems and leaves of numerous plants, including grapes, roses, basil, blueberry, cucumber, and horseradish. By late summer, the fourth instars emerge. These nymphs exhibit distinctive red coloring in addition to black bands and white spots. The photo shows a high population of fourth instar nymphs on a tree of heaven. This tree looked red from a distance. Along with spotted lanternfly adults, the fourth instar insects are probably the easiest life stage to notice and identify. Starting in late July, the fourth instar nymphs transition into adults. The skin of the fourth instar cracks open and the adult emerges, as you can see in this picture. Adults feed on the woody parts of plants and can be present in very high numbers, as you can see on this tree. Swarms of adult spotted lanternflies can quickly spread by hopping or flying to nearby plants and trees. Just a few hours before this video was taken, there were no spotted lanternflies in sight in this orchard. See how quickly things can change. The females start to lay eggs in September. Each female can lay multiple egg masses. Each egg mass has an average of 30 to 50 eggs. The female spotted lanternfly lays her eggs in rows right next to each other and then covers them in a putty-like secretion. The photo shows a female covering her eggs. The female may not completely cover all the eggs if she is startled or interrupted. This photo shows two egg masses. The bottom is covered, but the top is not. The covering starts out white and glossy, but dries to a mud-like appearance. Eventually, the cover may develop cracks. The female can lay egg masses on many surfaces, rocks, trees, wood, metal, even plastic. Females often choose sheltered locations to lay eggs, such as under eaves of homes. Notice egg masses in these photos on the protected undersides of furniture, rocks, and branches. Eggs may be laid anywhere on a tree, from the top branches and trunk all the way down to ground level. This photo shows many egg masses on a white birch tree. The variety of surfaces and locations make finding all the egg masses especially challenging. The spotted lanternfly has no natural enemies in the United States, so it is up to us to fight them. How can we combat this invader? First of all, be aware of the life stage that is currently active at a given time of year and know its habits. Nymphs emerge in May and are active all summer. Adults start to appear at the end of July and are active through the fall. Both nymphs and adults are very good hoppers, but only adults can fly. When you move around through the quarantine zone, it is crucial that you make sure you aren't inadvertently carrying along any nymphs or adults. All life stages can cling tightly to many surfaces, including the outside of moving cars. Check for and destroy hitchhikers as you walk and ride through infested areas. Egg masses are perhaps the greatest hitchhiking risk. Starting in the fall and through the winter, look and remove egg masses on vehicles, outdoor equipment, firewood, and anything else stored outdoors. If you find any hitchhiking lanternflies or eggs, kill them, swat or squish bugs, scrape egg masses, crush them, and put them in a plastic bag with a little rubbing alcohol or hand sanitizer. Your fellow citizens are counting on you to do your part in the fight to prevent the spread of this devastating invader. Help stop the costly invasion now.
Spotted lanternflies are active hitchhikers and make use of many modes of human-assisted transport. Luckily, you can outsmart these wily stowaways by consistently following some simple biosecurity best practices. First of all, be aware of the life stages of the insect that could be present at any given time of the year. For example, July through December is when adult spotted lanternflies are active. However, many people may not be aware that the nymph stages are present May through September. Being aware of the current active life stage will help you when you inspect vehicles and equipment for spotted lanternfly. For example, both adults and nymphs can cling tightly to many surfaces, including the outside of moving cars. So be on the lookout for one or both forms from May through December. Next, it is crucial that you know when you are in infested areas. Check the state's Department of Agriculture website to see if you are in a quarantine zone. If you live on an infested property or visit infested properties for work, be aware that you, your vehicle, and your equipment can harbor hitchhiking insects. Please check for them frequently. Do not park under trees or tree lines if possible. Spotted lanternflies tend to congregate in trees. Not only does parking near trees increase the possibility of hitchhiking, but the insects will coat anything below them, including your vehicle and equipment, with sticky honeydew. Do not leave vehicles open. Shut windows, trunks, hatches, and tailgates. Insects can and will enter any open portal. If possible, store vehicles and equipment inside. In areas of heavy infestations, insects may swarm and preventing them from entering your vehicle can be a challenge. Be sure to scan the interior of the vehicle and kill any insects you find before leaving the area. If you transport live animals, keeping the insects out of carriers presents a special challenge. Please consider screening or tarping them if you can. Be sure to inspect the carriers before and after using them and kill any insects that you find. If you are in a heavily infested area, you might want to tuck your pant legs into your socks to prevent adults from crawling inside your clothing. Before entering your vehicle, make sure that none are resting on your person. Remember that spotted lanternflies will not harm people or animals, so feel free to swat and smash as many as you can wherever you are. September through June is when egg masses are laid and are viable. From mid-September through spring, spotted lanternfly egg masses are the number one way this pest is transported. Spotted lanternflies will lay their eggs on any available surface, including equipment, pallets, rocks, and more. Therefore, avoid parking vehicles and storing equipment and stacking materials near tree lines where spotted lanternfly adults may be present. Chip trimmed woody debris. Putting wood through a chipper to produce one inch chips has been proven to disrupt the egg masses so that they do not hatch. Before moving equipment or supplies from an infested area, regardless of whether they were stored near a tree line, inspect for and destroy any egg masses. As someone who works in a quarantine zone, you are on the front line of the battle against these insect invaders. Your actions have a direct impact on the success of the quarantine. Please do your part in preventing the spread of these destructive pests. Spotted lanternflies lay their egg masses on just about any surface, fence posts, cinder blocks, rusty metal, and more. From mid-September through spring, spotted lanternfly egg masses are the number one way this pest is transported. Therefore, it is important that you search for and destroy egg masses on equipment and other items before you move them. The best time to check for egg masses is in the winter after all the egg-laying adults have died because then you only need to search for and destroy egg masses once. For example, if you thoroughly inspect your four-wheeler and remove all egg masses in February, you can be confident that there aren't any egg masses on it when you are ready to use it in the spring. Let's review what egg masses may look like. The spotted lanternfly lays columns of eggs side by side. There are usually 30 to 50 eggs per mass, but there can be as many as 80. The overall length of an egg mass is usually about one and a half inches. The female covers the eggs in a gray putty-like covering as shown in this photo. 
At first, the covering is shiny, as it appears here. But the covering gradually dries out and cracks over time. These two photos show the same egg mass taken four months apart. You can see how the covering has deteriorated. Sometimes, the female doesn't cover all the egg masses, as you can see on the left side of these photos. Here is a photo of a covered egg mass, an adult spotted lanternfly, and an uncovered egg mass. Here are some uncovered eggs that have already hatched. Notice the oval holes at the tops of the eggs. Now, let's see if you can spot the egg masses. Spotted lanternflies often lay their egg masses on tree trunks or branches. Can you spot the egg masses here? That's right, this tree has many egg masses. Now for more of a challenge. Here is a tulip poplar tree in the winter. Can you spot the egg masses from afar? That's right, there are many egg masses from the bottom to top of this tree. Spotted lanternflies are especially drawn to Tree of Heaven. Their egg masses blend well with Tree of Heaven bark. Can you see the egg mass on this Tree of Heaven trunk? They are good at blending in on the bark of other trees too. Can you see the egg mass here? Gypsy moth egg masses have a similar appearance to those of spotted lanternfly. Many of the same surfaces are used by both species. The covering for gypsy moth is more fibrous and generally more orange in color. Gypsy moth eggs are more spherical than spotted lanternfly eggs. Feel free to destroy gypsy moth egg masses too. Spotted lanternfly egg masses can be found on a wide variety of items. Be sure to check all surfaces. Even the undercarriage of a vehicle can harbor egg masses. Here is an old barrel. Do you see the egg masses? That's right. In this instance, spotted lanternflies seem to be attracted to the sheltered bottom of the barrel. There is a hidden egg mass in this dumpster. Do you see it now? Now, let's see if you can spot them on other structures. What should you do when you find egg masses? You can practice mechanical control by scraping and destroying egg masses. You can kill eggs by scraping them into a container of rubbing alcohol and leaving them there. Then double bag them and throw them away. You can also smash the eggs. However you go about it, be sure to do a thorough job on your egg mass search and destroy mission. Help us kill as many of these enemy pests as possible.